Hey everyone, today is December 13th. This is Natalie Pace and I'm really excited to share with you some of the important work of my friend, Brianna Brown. Now, Brianna Brown is a successful actress. She's been in the business for over 20 years. She has many beloved television shows and blockbuster films. But one of the things that I love most about her is her work in her nonprofit, The New Hollywood, and her guidebook, Manifesting Your Mission. So she is really um, helping others to plug into what they're here to do and how to make it successful. And we're going to get just a little peek at some of that right now. So stick with me. And remember, you can always watch this back at youtube.com forward slash Natalie Pace and be sure to share it with your friends. What a great holiday gift this will be to help each one of us kind of unlock the gifts and talents that we have and how we can best share it with the world. We'll be getting started in just a moment. Yes. So thank you for joining me, Brianna. What I'm really, really interested in talking about, of course, you know, people can see you and now they're gonna recognize, oh yeah, I remember her from that great film and that great TV show. But, you know, they don't know what you do behind the scenes, which to me is just as beautiful. So do you want to talk a little bit about the new Hollywood and um, and also your guidebook, which yeah. is why we're here today? Yes. Well, they actually go hand in hand. Um, and thank you for having me on. I've known you for absolutely forever. Um, and I just <laughs> adore you. Um, but I, so in 2006, I founded a nonprofit called the New Hollywood that supports socially conscious storytellers and change makers through goals, grants, and mentorship. And since 2006, <laughs> a lot has evolved. Um, mainly, we've gone from a group of women. Sometimes there's been phases where there's been men. Uh, where we wanted to not only just give back, but the people in the group because of the technique and the goal setting, which actually created the guidebook manifesting your mission. Um, because I just saw that there wasn't really anything out there that evolved with people as they grew in different phases of their life. And that was also pertinent for both artists and, um, entrepreneurs and being an actor and then also producing things. Like there's just different things that you need, different skill sets that you need. Um, especially in a consistently inconsistent career, which I think we all can relate to in a com consistently inconsistent world, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, tools to help anchor us and to get really clear on what we want, when we want it, how to execute it, and then also to allow. So uh, I created that guidebook and that's been a main tool that we've used within it. And then over the years now, because the people who that were part of it have evolved and grown and manifested so much <laughs> that now yeah. we are um, contributing even more to helping those less fortunate. And it's mainly going to women who were formerly homeless and mm. they are getting, um, they are getting mentorship grants and challenges to be able to help themselves excel. So they went through the harvest home program and then this is taking them to the next level. So it's really fun and additive. And, um, it's really neat to be able to take this tool set that has helped me be, you know, go from, you know, surviving in Hollywood to thriving and, um, which I know you're big on that and how to thrive, <laughs> Um, and, and using tools, um, and other people's resources and making sure that you're implementing it in a way, in a way that is effective, because as you know, most people, they just aren't consistent and that's why the tool doesn't work when it does work. It's just maybe our habit around it isn't effective. Well, and we're talking to someone guys here and Brianna is not only, you know, a producer an actress, you know, founding nonprofits, helping others in need. She's a mother and a wife too. Yeah. So, I mean, balancing all of this, and I'm sure that's part of the tool set that you um, include in manifesting your mission. I know, yeah. I, you know, I've been fortunate enough to watch the journey from before you had your family, your, your own family, and yeah. that that has its own set of challenges too, where, a, you know, a woman is saying, hey, who is my sacred beloved? Where, you know, where is my sanctuary home? So do you want to address a little bit about how that side of it, that personal, very personal side of it yeah. uh, folds into the work that you're doing here with manifesting your mission? Well, the thing that I love about the guidebook is I've always emphasized professional goals equal to personal goals. And, and I think that's really important. And you, I know are really big into fun and adventure and <laughs> including that that is just as additive 
you know, that we need that to restore and to have our purpose. And so we don't go to our gravestone saying, you know, what did I do? I didn't get to do any of my bucket list. Right. So that we are, we are making sure that we're having those experiences. So our life is worth living. And, um, I, I know as a mother, first of all, you don't know what you don't know until you have gone through it, (laughs) just how limited your time is. And so it's, it's actually been so great to be able to anchor even more into, you know, time management and really being clear of your values and really having strong, uh, strong boundaries and learning how to speak up for what you want now, because who, like for who, who I am now at 43 is not who I was a decade ago or the decade before that my needs change and they actually change annually. And I have to get, I have to get centered into what it is it that <laughs> I need now. <laughs> well, I'm thinking I'm me? laughing because of the developmental needs of your child. It's like first the yeah. nursing, then they're yelling at you. Then they're going to kindergarten. Now they're going to, you know? Yeah. And, and, and what I, you know, and you know this, but it's like, like brushing your teeth. You, you know, if you stop brushing your teeth and you stop flossing, you're not going to be surprised when you go to the dentist and they're like, Hey, you've got massive tooth decay and you need crowns or whatever. Yeah. But in our lives, we often don't pay attention to different areas, areas, uh, you know, and you obviously focus on finance, uh, you know, that we of, often drop the ball on certain things until life is giving us a D or an F or, you know, our house is on fire that we're like, oh boy, I need to do something. And, and yeah. this process actually helps you pay attention to like, okay, I'm getting like a, I'm getting like an A minus or a C. Like I gotta, I gotta wrap, I gotta figure out a new tool set. I need to figure out what I don't know. And I'm, I'm a big believer in if there's something that I don't know yet, all right, if there's something I don't know, it means that there's something I don't know yet, right? So if something's mm. not working, there's something I don't know yet, yet, mm, yes. you know? And, and I recently taught my son when we were, you know, figuring out Berlin, living abroad for three months, you know, trying to find different venues and, you know, do, find playgrounds and whatnot. And I, I just taught him like, you know what, Charlie, we're just going to keep, we're going to try, try, try till we figure it out. So now when when I don't really want to do something and he's asking me, he's like, well, mama, just try, try, try till you figure it out. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so they glad do. you're saying that. And okay, now I will figure out the remote or whatever the thing is. <laughs> but Very effective like, tool for mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, you know, I think that it's really important for us to, as, as, especially when we are, you know, once you're a parent, uh, you are, you just have a lot of different irons in the fire. And Definitely. so how to pay attention to that and, and what needs to be the priority vacillates. And especially like having a toddler in preschool can vacillate like this because they seem to always be sick, you know? And so how do I revamp? How do I, how do I punt what I need to and reevaluate? And then also have some ease and flow right. so that I'm not just running on fumes. Well, let's talk a little bit because I think that You know, when we talk about, um, you know, vacations and all the things that we can do restorative for our health, you know, I, you know, as I know, I firmly believe that the science is behind this in terms of our health and our mental health. But also what I have discovered both in my own life and in my coaching practice is that, look, if we can get in, even if we're juggling a lot, right, we can get into these routines where we don't necessarily see that yet right? We don't see where, and here's where you're saying, okay, well, we do need to pay attention and kind of give ourselves a score so that we can know, how do I need to address a little bit more? But let's talk first, uh, that's more on the manifesting side. Let's talk a little bit first about how you even find your mission. Because, you know, there is a point where you're like, well, I don't know if I should be an artist. And that's a tough road to take, right? I mean, right. there are times of, you know, where you feel like you're queen of the hill and other times where you feel like you're kind of the ant at the bottom of the hill. You know what I yeah. mean? So what is it that you do to even know what your mission is? What do you, what, how do you guide people to find that beautiful truth of themselves? Right. Well, it's actually kind of simple and that is slowing down enough to get present to what it is I really want now and what, what sparks me now, and then allowing yourself to follow that. Now, I I think if you're like, I want to be an artist, you probably have a pretty, pretty lit flame for what that is. Now, is that going to mean that it's going to be become a hobby or something that may evolve into something else? Or is that going to be your main source of income that can have, that can be due to varying degrees of life right (laughs) um so so we get to run at the reality of what is 
right? So um, when there's a pandemic, the reality of what is shifts. We have to keep being fluid with that, the just the evolution of life. But I, I think it's really important to, to take the time for what it is that you say you want. A lot of people, if they look at, if they really look at how they're spending their time, they're on social media a lot more than they're reading books. They're watching reality television instead of like doing that thing that that would actually really fulfill them. Maybe it's learning an instrument. Maybe it's taking a dance class. Maybe it's, you know, just, you know, spending quiet time with a loved one. The things that they say are the things that they value the most. We often get into really um, dysfunctional habits. Not that social media and television and whatnot are dysfunctional, but to, but at, but sometimes to a degree it can be. And so we have to pay attention to that. And we are often so busy because we don't want to feel, you know, we, we use all these different things to numb and to distract. And when we get clear on that, like, what is it that I want? And the exercises that I use in the guidebook actually help access both the right and left side of your brain, your conscious and your subconscious to be able to get clear. I'm like, what is it I want? Who am I? Where am I going? And that's like, okay, based on the reality of my circumstances right now, what's the next steps? And so mm. you're like, plan. But then there's also fluidity for when life changes, like you have an ailing parent or you have a miscarriage or whatever the things are that you have to have grace around adapting. Yeah. And, and, and healing and slowing down. You know, what I love about this is that there's an element in here. I, there's this phrase that I always used to hear when I was younger and it was like, follow your heart, follow your passion. But what it sounds to me like you're saying is that there's there's the mission is kind of hidden in there, right? Yes. Your min, your mission is, and I think too, you know, it's why it's called manifesting your mission because it's not like, and now my mission is accomplished. It's like, well, what? So you're done at 30 or 40 or 50. No, right. you're, it, until you're, you know, your legacy is until you pass. So it is a con, it is about the journey. And, and then there's, there's a constant unfolding, right? Like, you know, we all know that like, once you achieve X, you're going to be like, well, what about Y? Because I didn't even think Y was a possibility. And then it's Y. And then, you know, you, you, it keeps evolving. So we are constantly manifesting. And I think the big thing you're like, how do you manifest? Was like a lot of it's aligning our thoughts with our actions. Because a lot of times our thoughts and the stories in our head and our limiting beliefs are actually taking us in the opposite direction of what it is that we say we want. And we're surrounding ourselves with people and situations that are draining us. So how to pay attention to that how to navigate that, set boundaries around that, maybe avoid certain things, depending on, you know, the degree of how um, dysfunctional they are so that you are setting yourself up to win because we have so little time and energy and our most valuable commodity, you know, is our time and our energy. And so that's, this helps you just really look at it from a bird's eye point of view saying, what is it that I want? And to get still and have some, some time to evaluate because we, I, I know for myself, you know, if I look at what I've done in a month, I'll be like, I don't know, not much, you know, not. And then I actually look at what I've done and what I've created. And it's like a laundry list of things. I'm just like, oh, and this and this and this, and I did this and this and this, but we often go to the negative, or, you know, God bless those that who just go to the positive, but you know, like, I, it I, takes I, a I, lot I, of practice. I, it takes a lot of practice <laughs> to just constantly be like, I just, I just see that, you know, that is not my go-to. So I need to be reminded and yeah. re-reminded and see it and also give myself grow or give myself credit for growth. Right. Because that's the other thing, especially people that are type A, that are perfectionists, that are overachievers. We don't acknowledge the small steps. It's like, well, I will acknowledge it when it's complete. I will yeah. acknowledge it when that has happened. And I joke that like, that, you know, for some type A perfectionists, it's like, unless they're levitating and won the Oscar that year, then they just didn't do enough. You know, <laughs> so it's like, like, how can you be like, okay, I actually repaired, you know, a, a really important relationship. I, I, you know, started to write that book, whatever the things are like the, that yeah. has just as much validity as the big wins. And, you know, I've spoken to people who, you know, who are highly accomplished and, and often those things, they don't even celebrate when they have them. Right. Yeah. So how yeah. do we celebrate throughout? And this sets us up to do that so that you're then saying like, you're honoring all that time and energy and not just wiping past like, okay, what's next? What's next? Yeah. And whether you're type A or the person that has too much negative self, self-talk and maybe low self-esteem, you know, yeah. both of, both of those 
uh, the answer is still the same for exactly both. I often same. say, I often say, you know, my dreams inspire my direction, but my footsteps take me there. So yeah. let's talk a little bit more about the steps of manifesting. What is it that you think is so important? And maybe, maybe you can include whether it's somebody you've coached or uh, an event in your own life where your footsteps were headed in the wrong direction and you had to course correct. We've all been there, right? Yes. Yes. Well, something that pops in, in the top, you know, top of mind is there's someone that I'm working with who's a choreographer, Broadway choreographer, professional dancer, really beautiful soul. And, you know, sh through the pandemic, through having two children, through just having some health issues, um, having gone through in vitro and all that's done to her body. Like she just wasn't doing the things that she loved. And she had this real burning desire to create an adult dance class and you'd think that's like okay well then you'll just easily do it but there was such right. an inner distance to it and we just worked through it and I <laughs> I held her feet to the flame I'm like okay so this is how you do it and this is how you make it simple and this is what we're doing you know and, and we came up with a course uh, you know a, a path and she did it and she she said once she actually started and got in the studio she just wept and mm. she her body wept because she just she needed it and it is to me and she's even admitted it no surprise that her health ailments have dissipated of course now, she's been doing other other things like functional medicine and all of that but there was a stored resentment and trauma and grief that needed to be released because she wasn't doing what she what what is part of her purpose mm. so i'm talking, hearing I'm hearing that part of your manifestation practice involves goals and uh, and things that you have to do. So let's talk a little bit. Do you would you be willing to share a goal you have for yourself? Who, um, you know, I it's so funny because I just completed this year and I uh, I achieved seventy nine percent of my twelve goals for the year plus additional things. I we, I have like a little math equation that's like fun. You're like, oh, I can do that. And, you know, it's fun to look at. Um, and and then I start again in the new year. So I'm like, I don't know what this next year is. I know what's kind of probably carry over, but what mm. am I actually put tons of energy into? I'm like, this is my kind of my break. Like, okay, let's see, let's see what percolates. And then I look through. I go through the guidebook. Um, you know, I go through. I have a workshop that I do with the guidebook where you go through all of the, all of the exercises to get really clear on what you want and setting your path. So I haven't done that yet for this next year, but, um, or for this upcoming year, but, uh, gosh, you know, there are certain things I always, one of the things, you know, I, I won't necessarily get into specifics, but like, I always tell people they should have a marriage goal. Like if they're married or want to be in a serious relationship, they should absolutely have a marriage goal. <laughs> and that doesn't mean therapy. <laughs> Or you're just focusing on the problem, but things that are additive, things that are going to cultivate a deeper relationship, deeper communication, you know, our, our relationships bring up our childhood baloney. <laughs> and, you know, there are many belief systems that that is part of this, the relationship, the part of the purpose of a spiritual relationship is to bring up your childhood wounds. So how do you do that and still have fun and have time for one another? So you're not just you know, roommates, teammates, you know, people that are just, you do this with the kids and I do that with the kids. So yeah. there are certain goals that I think are very important if you've made certain commitments in your life to say, oh, I, I or I commit to this and make, have some sort of achievable, not, it doesn't even need to be overwhelming habit. And I yeah. often say, how can you make it fun? Ooh. And that could thing as simple as, I mean, it can be as simple as like a weekly date night, if your budget allows for that to um how can what what is something you can do together that is fun and additive you know and 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 that depending on the person you know you can kind of brainstorm um based on what they need and what who the two people are but that's a big one that i really emphasize because i think that two the, you know the reason that so many people get divorced is they're not putting time and energy into their relationship um and relationships are hard. Um, and then also the thing that you kind of, to go back, like what are things, something simple that people can do is I'm a ferocious reader. I, I am obsessive <laughs> and I am obsessive about multiple topics based on what I'm focused on. So let's say it is relationship. I will read from the best of the best, multiple books from different people to get different points of view and then see where in the Venn diagram, is it the same? Listen to what feels right. And then pick a lane. 
you know? Mm, yeah. How can I implement it? And how can I implement it in a way that's realistic? Right. So, um, you know, sometimes meditation has been a goal or whatever the thing is, or how do I want to tweak that? You know, but a lot of it for me is, is polishing. It's like, let me polish it. Let me turn it up a bit. You know, it's like, yeah, cooking. the more you get into cooking, the more the real that you realize that it's all the nuances. Okay. How, how high is the heat? What type of finishing salt? What are the, you realize it gets into detail, 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 Absolutely. And I, you know, seeing, seeing those details from someone who understands it better than I can understand what I didn't know before. Right. All right. So I know that uh, we, you would, you would promise me that perhaps we could do an exercise. Yes. This is a great exercise. Okay. Yes. It's very simple and you actually have to do it for it to make sense. Right. Okay. So you can kind of, you know, a lot of the exercises you could read it and say, Oh, that, that seems fine. Like I have a friend who's this, who's a big uh, life coach and she's like, Oh yeah, I understand. I understand. And then she actually did it. And she's like, oh, I, you know, all of a sudden I'm realizing all these things. So to actually do it. Okay. Um, I'm a big believer in pen to paper, just because okay. we remember things better when we write than when we type. Um, there's science based on that, but so it's called get real and rise up. Like, okay. Let's get real, <laughs> let's get real so, and rise up. Let's, let's do get it. real and let's rise up. All right. So the first question, and you just, I, I really recommend taking a few deep breaths, just getting in your body. Okay. Everybody do this. Uh, just letting go of anything that's holding you back right now. Any extra thoughts? Just let that go. Take another deep breath in. And breathe out. And then stream of consciousness, whatever comes to your mind, I want you to answer this question. What is holding me back really? Whatever comes to mind. Pen to paper. What is holding me back really? And then the next question, and there's a reason we do it fast. Why haven't I achieved it yet? Why haven't I achieved it yet? Whatever comes to mind, top of mind. Next, where do I get to take responsibility? Where do I get to take responsibility? Next, what actions or habits would be the most beneficial for me to implement to help solve the situation. Top of mind, what does your gut say? What actions or habits would be the most beneficial for me to implement to help solve this situation? And then you take another deep breath. And then you reread it and you look back and then you turn it into some sort of goal or habit. You know, you look at it. It's it, instead of we we often point everyone else is the problem. This is the problem. This is the problem. And while situations can suck, what can I do? What can I do with the control I have with all of the incredible tools out there? And you know? I think that's uh, you know I know we only have a, a little more time, but I think that's part of it. You know, whenever. And all of us have had that moment where we felt completely overwhelmed, like the problem's too big for us, right? And what I've done, and I know you probably have as well, there's somebody that has that wisdom. And the key is you don't want to find somebody who tells you they have that wisdom and instead has another agenda, because that can happen too. That can show up for you too. But yep. to really do the due diligence required to say this not just my gut, but my brain and my gut in concert are saying, yeah, I'm going to listen to this way. Show I believe this is a truth teller. I believe this is a way shower. And I'm going to, in other words, we can't do it all ourselves, right? No, not pot. There's no way we're not meant to. That is not what we're meant to do. We're tribal for a reason. And so how can I see that people's words and actions are aligned, that they are embodying the very thing that they're talking about? Like I, one of the things I loathe is when I see on social media, people that are like, you know, influencers and they're talking about, let's, again, let's talk about relationships. I know a handful that are like, you know, they speak about what to do with relationships. I'm like, I know your personal life. And I know for a fact, you are literally not in a healthy relationship or you're not in a relationship. Like, how are you speaking right. on this? This doesn't make sense to me. But, um, but just because someone has a platform doesn't mean, or they have, you know, a bunch of followers, which can be purchased by the way, um, doesn't mean that they have the most valid information. You know, I'm big on, you, you can, you can, you can, anyone can regurgitate information, but I want to see someone who's embodied it. That right. person can teach me how to fast track. 
because they know the ins and outs. They've made the pitfalls and you're going to, you know, make mistakes. And you may be taking the wrong path. You know, you, you may be take, you know, people get into cults, you know, people sometimes take the wrong path in life. And it's like, okay, maybe the, you have the right intentions, but maybe this isn't the right, you know, the right path, you know? Yeah. So how do I step back and how do I find the right path for me um, based on what it is that I'm trying to learn right now? And that is, again, why I like to look at a lot of sources from a lot of different angles so that I can just have really a great, a better sense of whatever I'm feeling, you know, overwhelmed or struggled with. And I I do believe that like some simple, simple, simple habit is reading 15 minutes a night, Mm, you know, instead of of taking, and again, how do you make things that seem overwhelming simple? I have a saying like, keep it simple, stupid, keep it simple, stupid. You know, people make things way too complicated. Like not, it's all about like, you know, 1% change, 1% change, 1% change. And then over time that becomes a totally different trajectory. It becomes who you are, right? I always say, that's why a lot of my courses are 21 days because that breaks the habit and sets a new one. And I will say, you know, as somebody that used to have a lot of negative self-talk, I mean, my my brain just defaulted there. It still does sometimes, but not usually. And that has been the course of a 20 year trajectory of really doing the work of consciously stopping and saying, you know, the universe doesn't see the don't in there. If you believe don't let that happen. I think that it just doesn't see the don't. It lets that happen because that's all you're seeing. Don't let that, what all of this whole 360 of other possibilities, you don't see them, you know? Right. Like I, for example, I, I use this example. You don't, I have never met a dancer who goes around saying, I'm so clumsy. Mm, Love it. Yeah. Where you're like, Oh God, I'm so clumsy. I'm so clumsy. I'm so clumsy. And they're like, Oh, I'm such a beautiful dancer. Like you don't see it. That's not the, that those things don't align. You know, and yeah. I've met people who just have the belief system. I am just so lucky. I'm just so lucky. Mm-hmm. Not like, like, like not, not like they're not, they don't work hard. They're like, Oh, I'm just, I'm just so lucky. And, and things just flow to them. Right. Yeah. And you know, my mother had a belief system of life is hard. Life is hard. Mm-hmm. So that was the thing like where I felt everything needed to be really hard. And I didn't realize I was actually making things harder. So if you have a belief <laughs> system, I was like, I don't need to make it that hard. Right. Like, it doesn't <laughs> have to be that hard. Like, you know, there are things you can do um, yeah. to simplify it. Right. Or not start and then stop and then go do something else and start and stop. And they're like, oh, it didn't work. It's like, well, yeah, you didn't really do it. And so that's mm. why, you know, evaluating things honestly realistically, you know, in a fun way. I mean, the way this way my guidebook set up is it's, it's fun. It's easy. It's simple. It's seemingly super simple. And it's, but, but because we get to really look at like, what is working, what is not working, why, and right. we can see it in a way. And then we're like, okay, this is how I polish, right? This is how I pivot. Okay. This right. is how I'm going to adjust this. It's like a, a friend of mine, Julie Delabar. She talks about how she's a nutritionist and a celebrity trainer. And she says, she's like, Hey, with health and wellness, it's a science experiment. Your body is it's science. So let's get into the science experiment. And suddenly that doesn't feel so charged, right? It's not so personal or a failure, whatever this thing is. So, you know, how do we reframe it in a way so that we, you know, push past feeling uncomfortable because all change is uncomfortable (laughs) until it becomes the new normal. Yeah. Okay. So how can people access your guidebook, access your wisdom? Where should they go to get this okay. information? Um, well, the guidebook is called Manifesting Your Mission. So it's mym.briannabrownkeen.com. And so you can go there and buy the guidebook. And if you get it before December 21st, I'm doing a really fun uh, pre-order holiday special Ooh, that la, you la. get a complimentary seat at my workshop, which is by zoom. So you don't have to be in LA and we actually go through the guidebook and you can ask questions and get really clear on what you want. And it's normally $300 and I'm giving it as a, as just like a wonderful holiday gift, um, just to help people set up because a lot of people are really struggling. And, you know, I know that we just Definitely. need some, that extra hand holding to say, okay, here's how you do it. We're going to do it. We're going to set it up. And then you can just, you know, run with it. So uh, manifesting your mission is mym.briannabrownking.com. Perfect. And what a fabulous holiday gift. I'm going to give it to my folks and (laughs) uh, everybody be sure to follow Brianna on Instagram. You can share her stories there. Your people can know about this awesome gift that Brianna's offering. 
Thank you, my love. You're looking gorgeous. I'm so Thank happy you. to oh, hear. Yes. Also, a portion of the proceeds benefit the, not, the New Hollywood, which are helping the formerly homeless moms. So you're not only helping yourself, but you're helping give back. Fantastic. Bravo. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop it there.